Two-time WWE Women's Champion. Two-time WWE Divas Champion. Ranked number one of the top 50 female wrestlers in the PWI Female 50 in 2010. Ladies, gentlemen, my non-binary friends, it is I, Josh Robinson, here for Love Wrestling. And it's time to explore the legacy of Michelle McCool. McCool first came to WWE as a competitor in the 2004 WWE Diva Search, which of course I did an episode on the WWE Diva Search back a few seasons ago here on this very program. So if you want to hear all about the WWE Diva Search, just search the legacy of the WWE Diva Search. But she wouldn't win the WWE Diva Search. She was signed though after competing and being a favorite in the Diva Search. She was signed to a three-year deal in November of 2004. She began kind of uh, appearing Hearing in WWE in the early part of 2005 and you know really developing her her skills while still being relatively well not relatively very new to the wrestling scene now Michelle McCool was a former teacher uh, obviously has an athletic background when it comes to just naturally being able to pick things up she kind of worked with Renee Dupree, Dawn Marie, Heidenreich, Eminem they were her kind of first, like, interactions within the WWE world. Of course, Melina, M Michelle McCool kind of starting around the same time on SmackDown. Now, you got to remember, in 2005 and 2006, when McCool was first really starting in WWE, there was no female championship on the blue brand. They were essentially fighting for nothing. They were just kind of side pieces to the rest of the program. Now, McCool would come off of TV to really hone her craft and be sent down to the development territories of WWE, whether that be OVW or Deep South Wrestling. She would kind of train in the uh, latter part of 2005, and again, it was a woman that was obviously very athletic and able to pick up the kind of, the athletic side of the business relatively easily. I think it's all pretty much kind of universally agreed upon that Michelle McCool was able to pick up wrestling pretty damn fast and was really showing signs of being able to work in a time where working was not really the quote-unquote important part of being a WWE diva. I spoke before about Michelle McCool being a teacher in her former life, I guess you could say, uh, before appearing in the wrestling scene. She would make her return to the main roster on SmackDown on June 2nd, 2006. She was a heel. She was playing that kind of sexy teacher gimmick that, you know, all women had to be very sexy when it comes to the divas division in this time. She was pretty much kind of, I wouldn't say thrusted into a main event scene or anything like that, but she was in a pretty predominant role within the company in the early, early to mid part of 2006. Michelle McCool would have some time in the ring, but mainly being a valet. The team of Casey James and Idle Stevens, who became her, because of her association, they were nicknamed the Teacher's Pets. They would kind of feud with the likes of Paul London, Brian Kendrick. They would, they would go for the WWE Tag Team Championships, but never really win them. Um, it, it, it was becoming a time where Michelle McCool was becoming more of a mainstay of the blue brand throughout the latter part of 2006. Now, she would be taken off of TV with an enlarged kidney, a broken sternum, an electrolyte imbalance. She had a lot going on. She would not return until WWE until March 20th, 2007 on an episode of SmackDown. She was in a 10 Diva tag, and then she kind of became a face again before, you know, Getting herself back into the, I guess you could say, valet role. She was kind of doing a little bit of both, but she was associated with Chuck Palumbo, becoming that, like, all-American diva uh, in the 2007 to 2008 time. Now, while the Chuck Palumbo and Michelle McCool alliance didn't last all that too long on screen, Michelle McCool was again placed into a spot in the WWE Divas division where, again, the blue brand didn't really have anything to fight for, until, of course, the WWE Divas Championship came along. Uh, McCool would become the very first. You can only really, there's only one person that can be the first, and Michelle McCool was the first to win the WWE Divas Championship. She would defeat Natalia at the Great American Bash in July of 2008. Now, again, I know a lot of people look at the WWE Divas Championship, the, the infamous butterfly title, 
and kind of looked down upon and we had the women's championship over on Raw. But you got to remember, in a time where women were not, they weren't hired to be great workers. There was few and far between of the real standout great workers, just the great wrestlers that they had of the time. Michelle McCool was one of the very few great workers in that time. Michelle McCool was picking up professional wrestling faster than a lot of people ever can. Of course, she had Natalia in there in the first ever match for the WWE Divas Championship. You're going to have some, at least you're trying to get some shine on a championship that is a butterfly that a lot of people already looked down upon before it was even, you know, thrusted into the WWE. Michelle McCool would go on to hold the championship for quite a little while uh, before dropping it to Maurice in 2008. Now for a majority of at least the wrestling time for Michelle McCool, we had only seen her as a babyface. It was really Michelle McCool losing the Divas Championship and being put into a heel role when McCool really just bursted out onto the scene of WWE. She would make more history in 2009 when she became the first ever woman to win the both WWE Divas Championship and the WWE Women's Championship. Michelle McCool was the it girl of WWE, at least their top heel. Of course, I did a whole episode on Lay Cool. I invite you to go and watch the legacy of Lay Cool when you can. Um, and I kind of go more in depth than I'm about to go with Lay Cool um, and just the impact that they had on being the two, some of the biggest heels in the company at the time. If you really think about it, they were just the mean girl kind of they were, they were the, the, the women you wanted to be. They were working with all the top baby faces of Raw. Michelle McCool was really positioned as the wrestler of the two. I mean, props to Layla. And I think she greatly improved over, again, another ex-Diva search girl, kind of fighting the mold of what it was to be a diva and actually learning to work. Uh, and I know everyone's going to be like, Josh, there was this and this in the diva's time. You know me. I always kind of... If there's something stand out about that time, I will always highlight it. There was a lot of great workers in the time, but the top tier of workers in that time of 2008, 2009, 2010 was Michelle McCool. When we talk about the time of the Divas division and the time that Michelle McCool was working, again, it wasn't about putting on great matches, but that doesn't mean there wasn't some shining lights in the time of Michelle McCool's career. It's funny to say this now with the way that the women are presented in WWE, but, you know, they got in trouble. It's a very infamous story that Melina and Michelle McCool have both told that their match at Night of Champions in July 26, 2009 they got in a lot of trouble for putting on a great match. It's pretty insane to say. I don't think it's so much they were getting in trouble for putting on a great match. It's just the WWE thinking the audience does not want to see women work. They do not want to see women put on great matches. Now, you got to remember at the time what we were getting on the counter part of things. If you were looking for great women's wrestling in a mainstream sense, TNA were putting on those matches with the likes of Awesome Kong and Gail Kim and Victoria. All of these women were kind of going into... TNA and actually being able, given a chance to work. Michelle McCool and Molina do something like this to replicate what they're doing on TNA, and all of a sudden they're in trouble. But Michelle McCool would have moments where she was able to showcase exactly what she could do in the ring with the likes of Molina. And of course, Lay Cool coming a thing and being on every single pay per view that WWE is offering. Again, there's only one women's match on the show, but nine times out of ten, Layla and Michelle McCool were featured in these matches, whether it be against the Kelly Kellys or the Beth Phoenixes, Molinas, Mickey James, they were in top stories. Now, again, I, I talked about a lot with Michelle McCool and Layla's time as Lay Cool in its own episode, so we are going to kind of get past this and um, move on to the next stage of what uh, Michelle McCool was doing. The Lay Cool era of WWE would take part and and kind of end Michelle McCool's time with a with the company uh, in 2011. They were able to have their match and Michelle McCool was on her way out. Of course, putting over a new talent coming in in Karma, Awesome Kong, and we don't need to get into what happened with that, but Michelle McCool's final bump as a main roster mainstay was against Awesome Kong. 
Michelle McCall was the first ever WWE Women's Champion, the first woman to hold both the Divas Championship and then the Women's Championship, and of course, the one who unified the WWE Divas Championship with the WWE Women's Championship. Now at time of recording, and I don't think anything's going to change in the few days since I released this, or any kind of story is going to come out because it's just not that type of time of year, but Michelle McCool to this day is not in the WWE Hall of Fame. I think it's only fitting that she is in there soon um, as a person who was way ahead of her time. If you think of the talent that we have now, uh, Michelle McCool would fit right in with all of these women with the likes of a Charlotte Flair and a Bianca Belair and an Asuka and an Io Sky, the Jade Cargills. She would fit there because she is... She was and, and still is. We've seen her in um, Royal Rumble matches coming back a few times. I think if Michelle McCool wanted to have another run in WWE in the wrestling world, I'm pretty certain she could. I'm pretty certain that Michelle McCool could just step right back in and 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 look pretty damn good doing it. We The most recent time that we've seen her in the WWE was the Royal Rumble of earlier this year. She was a surprise entrance. After telling everyone she wasn't going to be in it, she wrestled in some Ugg boots. So, like, good for her. She does a lot of good stuff and can still hang with the top talent that WWE has to offer today. That's going to do it for this week's episode of The Legacy Of. We're in the final season. We're all... all guns are blazing as they say i think that's a saying it is now uh, it is all guns blazing for the final season of the legacy of here on love wrestling you can follow me pretty much across the board on socials at josh robinson underscore zero zero you can follow love wrestling pretty much across the board at love wrestling ca let me know what you think about michelle mccool and the series here uh, in the comments and on twitter on or X, whatever you want to call it, Instagram, anywhere you want to tell us how good you, uh, how much you're loving the legacy of. Uh, leave a like, share, subscribe, all of that kind of fun stuff. And until next week, folks, I am out of here. Peace out.